We begin with breaking news. Yet another small earthquake rattling Southern California. It's at least the third quake to strike just in the last five days. This latest quake of magnitude 3.6 rattled parts of Orange County just before 5 o'clock. It was centered about a mile southeast of Costa Mesa, about a mile and a half east northeast of Newport Beach. The quake struck at a depth of about seven miles, according to the U.S. Geological Service. It is the latest in a small, a series of small quakes rocking the area this week. Again, this was a 3.6 quake that hit in the Newport Beach area following other recent quakes in South Pasadena. No damage or injuries were reported as a result, but certainly a wake up call for everyone who felt it. Have you ever experienced an earthquake? The ground beneath your feet starts to tremble, but it's more than just a tremble. It feels like the earth itself is breathing in and out. Buildings shake the air with the sounds of stress. And what I mean is structures all around you start to moan. Concrete sings. Glass wobbles and screams before it breaks. And the worst is the sound of metal. Oh, that sound. That sound is terrifying. The sound of metal bending and twisting, doing its best to resist the earth herself as she's breathing. Now, if you're from California, this is something that you've gotten used to and you know a lot about. However, for me, I'm not from California. I'm born and raised in Texas. I know about oppressive heat and I know about tornadoes. Two things you can prepare yourself for ahead of time. So when I took the job as a news reporter in Orange County, California, two years ago, it never crossed my mind that I would be in an earthquake. Sure, I knew there was a possibility. There's always a possibility. But it never really crossed my mind that I would find myself in an earthquake. Imagine a scene. We had just had an earthquake and I'm dispatched to the field to get some B-roll for the evening news and see if I can drum up a few man on the street interviews. Now it just so happens that I beat my videographer and cameraman to the location. So I parked my car across the street from this underpass, walk over and take a look. Now I figured standing under the underpass would make a good shot. I mean, it would be dramatic, you know? taking advantage of the fears in people's mind that the overpass itself would crumble. However, looking back over the incident that happened a couple of days ago right now, I wish I would have stayed inside. Right now, I realize that there's more for us to be concerned about than just damn earthquakes. Picture the scene. I'm standing there under the overpass practicing what I would say when my cameraman got here. When the ground starts to shake again, let me explain it to you. There is no feeling like standing on the ground and it starts to wobble and move back and forth. At first, you're thinking to yourself, am I stumbling? Am I falling over? And then you look around and realize that everything around you is shaking. I'm coming to that realization. Everything is around me shaking. I'm standing under the overpass and I look up and I say to myself, no, no, no way in hell will I be the news commentator who dies under a collapsed overpass. Listen, I would rather be impaled by a flagpole than be the news reporter that everybody was talking about who was crushed under the overpass. And so now I'm scrambling from under that overpass into the street, dodging cars. And I notice a man comes running, scrambling from under there and he goes across the street. Now I'm standing in the middle of the street on the white dotted line. Everything is shaking. Buildings are shaking. You can hear the glass wobbling. You can hear the concrete of that underpass dealing with the stress of this earthquake. Later, I will learn that it was a 3.2 magnitude earthquake, but that 3.2 for the time period that it happened was absolutely terrifying. Now, what was more terrifying than that was once everything calmed down, the same gentleman that I saw run across the street starts to walk back across the street, passing me headed back under the underpass. When I look at him, his face is morphing. Now, if you imagine a person's face morphing, you're thinking like it's twisting and turning like some kind of demonic entity. No, sir. No, ma'am. That's not what was going on. His face was morphing like there was some kind of static electricity on a mask that was on his head that was covering his true identity. And every time the static broke, I got a glimpse of what looked like a damn lizard. I mean, a full on lizard head. This thing had a thin pointed chin, scaly skin, pointy teeth and a gilled 
neck. Understand the entire situation. My body's already pumped full of adrenaline after this earthquake, and now I'm seeing this. And part of me is saying, okay, you're losing your mind. The other part of me is saying, hell no, this is real. And so now I'm taking two steps back, and I'm reaching to get my pocket knife. He looks at me. I reach to get my pocket knife because I don't know what's about to happen. It looks at me, turns that staticky mask off, and says, what do you think you're going to do? Stop, pause right here, and let me say this. I've watched old school horror movies my whole life. I have. And although I'm not a horror movie freak, I've seen enough movies to realize at this point in time that every damn thing that these people are putting in these movies is real. Because this thing looks at me, asks me a question, then taps its chest, and his face turns back human. This was some Star Trek type I was looking at. So now I turn around and take off running up the street only to run about 45 yards before my cameraman pulls up next to me, flags me down and says, why are you running? Now ask yourself a question. If you found yourself in that situation, what would you do? Would you turn to the cameraman, your friend who's going to report back to your boss and say, oh, I just saw a lizard person? Or would you come up with some kind of excuse? I came up with an excuse, the best excuse I could, and I told him I had to use the restroom, so I was jogging up the street to go to the restroom. He looks at me, I look at him, he looks at me like I'm absolutely crazy, and says, get in the van, let's go get this report, and get it over with. A few minutes later, we're back under the overpass. It was his idea this time, and I am recording, looking around, trying to see if I see this man. The only person I see under that underpass is a homeless man. He had the exact same clothes on that that thing did. 